Welcome. This week I'm going to do, instead of a traditional you sitting in a classroom seminar, I'm going to be doing a video seminar. So you're expected to watch this video, um, compare your methods for the problems and then be able to answer the questions on the problem sheet. So here we go. So in this video I'm going to recap how to calculate voltages in an AC series circuit using capacitors, resistors and inductors and then I'm going to go through the method to the problem sheet questions. So I'm not going to give you all of the answers you can access those via Moodle but I am going to show you the method that you would need to use to solve these questions. So first up let's recap what we've done in class so far. So we've got this very familiar now hopefully um, setup where we've got a series circuit with an inductor, a capacitor and a resistor supplied by an AC supply. We can see that the current is common and flows through all of these components since it's a series circuit and we've often been asked to calculate the voltage drop across each of these components. What we've done so far is these types of questions where we've got what the current is. So we've got what I is, which is good. Um, but we know that step one, we're going to just calculate these voltages. So we're going to do the resistor first because that's nice and easy. So for the resistor, we know as always Ohm's law, it's just V is equal to I times R. We can calculate VR easily because we know the value of the current that's given up here and we know the value of the resistor because that's also given in the question. So this gives us 25 volts, which we can also write in phasor form to be a magnitude of 25 at an angle of zero degrees, still in volts. So remember, this is zero degrees from the current. Now we're going to calculate those um, Oh, capacitor and inductor voltages, that capacitor one's escaped. So we know once again VL is equal to basically I times R, but we don't have a resistance. We've got now, because it's an inductor, we've got a reactant. So I'm just going to change my pointer options to be a pen so I can draw on the screen. We've got VL is equal to I times XL. XL, remember, is a value in ohms. It's the reactant. So we know how to calculate that. XL is equal to omega times L. Omega is the value of the frequency in radians per second. And just remember, sometimes you'll have radians per second and sometimes you'll have hertz. It's this relationship that omega is equal to 2 pi f that's the important bit. But since we've got a value in radians per second for the frequency, I'm just going to put that straight in down here, which makes the maths a bit easier. So I can put in XL is 300 radians per second times the value of that inductor, which is 10 millihenries or 0.01 which will give me a reactance of 3 ohms. What I do now is I substitute that value back into basically Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. Always, always remember this. It's so, so, so important. There aren't so many equations this semester, but they're all basically derived from Ohm's law. So if we now substitute our values in, we've done the hard work, we get an answer of VL is equal to 1.5 volts. And if we convert this to polar form, remember we've got that phase shift. So if we want to be much more correct, we can say VL is equal to 1.5 at an angle of plus 90 degrees volts. This all links into that phasor diagram stuff and civil because we now have this phase shift between the current flowing through the components and the voltages across them. So once more, this is just recapping a problem that I did in the lecture. I'm just talking you through it. Again, for the capacitor, we've still got Ohm's law. We've still got some voltage is equal to some current times some resistance. But because it's a capacitor, we don't have resistance. We have reactants, but it's still measured in ohms. So let's find XC. We know XC is 1 over omega C. So that's the operating frequency times the value of the capacitor. And then it's just the reciprocal of those. If we put the values in, we get an answer of 71 ohms out. We can then substitute XC back into our equation here, and we get a value for the voltage of 35.5 volts. And remember, that is just the magnitude. We now need to put that phase shift in. So if we do that, we can say more correctly that VC is equal to a magnitude of 35.5 at an angle of minus 90 degrees in volts. 
So step two, we're going to combine those voltages now. And this is when we need to take into account those phase shifts. So in a standard series circuit, which was a DC supply, you could just add all of those values together. Because this is AC, you can no longer do this because of that pesky phase shift. So what I'm going to do is put my phasor diagram together. So the voltage across the resistor I know is magnitude of 25 at an angle of zero degrees so I'm just going to put that in and remember if I had my reference phaser I'd draw it here with an I because I've chosen I as my reference phaser because this same current flows through all of these components it's common because it's series there's nowhere else for it to go so next up let's add my inductor so this one is a magnitude of 1.5 at an angle of plus 90 degrees so let's add that on here we go, I've made it quite small because the magnitude of that is much, much smaller than 25. Finally, let's add our capacitor voltage in. So this one is a magnitude of 35.5 at an angle of minus 90. So the capacitor and the inductor are going to attempt to cancel each other out. So let's add that to the phasor diagram. As we can see, this minus 90 goes in the opposite direction to the plus 90, as you'd expect. But because the magnitude of that capacitor voltage is so much bigger than the magnitude of the inductor voltage, essentially the capacitor wins. So overall, we're going to get the minus 90 degrees direction for our resultant vector. So now it's just a vector sum, calculate the supply. So we draw that across here. And we've got, remember, a magnitude, which is the length, but we also need to calculate this phase angle theta. So let's calculate the magnitude first. So we can see this is just Pythagoras because it's a right angled triangle. And um, VL minus VC is effectively the resultant length from here to here so it's the overall effect of what happens doesn't matter if this is a negative number because it's squared so that will all work itself out if we do the sums there put the values in we end up with vs is equal to a magnitude of 42.2 volts finally step three let's find that phase angle so look at your diagram we can see that's where our phase angle theta is use a bit of trigonometry we can see that tan minus 1 is equal to VL minus VC so that's this length here okay and if you think about it this is the opposite this is the adjacent and this is the hypotenuse so that's why we end up using tan put those numbers in and we get an answer of minus 53.7 degrees phase and remember that's because the angle is downwards from the starting axes. If it was a positive angle, it would just mean it was in this direction. So hopefully that makes sense, but really it is just practice. And the more practice you have on these, the more comfortable you're going to be with this stuff. So our final answer, we can write V supply is equal to a magnitude of 42.2 at an angle of minus 53.7 degrees. And remember it's in volts, so stick that volt symbol on the end. This also led us to talking about the various um, reactances at different frequencies. So XC is the reactance of the capacitor. And remember, XC is this uh, 1 over omega C. So that's an inverse relationship. Whereas the reactance of an inductor is just the operating frequency times the value of that inductor. So that's a linear relationship. And remember, R is just constant with frequency. So that's why it's a straight line. Um, this plot is just for illustration. You obviously get different values depending upon your components in your circuit. But Z is the overall impedance of that circuit. Um, and it looks something like this. So some of the questions on the seminar sheet were asking you to calculate various impedances. So the important thing to remember is Z has essentially a resistance and a reactance. Um, so it's resistance plus react. So I could say Z is equal to R plus X. It's entirely up to you, but it also then has this complex term that we looked at last seminar, which represents the phase shift. We can calculate Z just by using this formula. We've had it before. We've drawn this on phasor diagrams. 
So let's go through seminar question one. I've managed to show you some of the answer here already due to my failure at PowerPoint, but let's keep going. So we've got a capacitor and inductor connected in series. They're energized by an AC voltage source with a frequency that reactances of each component are 125 ohms and 170 ohms respectively. So what is the total impedance of this series combination? Well, there's a couple of different ways to look at it. You can draw a diagram, you can draw an inductance diagram, or you can just have this jump in with the equation straight away because we've got um, capacitor first so that's XL and then we've got XC so remember it says respectively which means that's the way it's so it says inductor oh sorry capacitor first so it means this is XC and inductor second so that's XL so what's the total impedance well what we've got here is um, you can calculate the total impedance quite easily so just put the values in the main thing is there's no resistor so you don't need to take account of that r term so i've just put zero squared in here then we're going to substitute in oh, i've done it the wrong way round ah okay cancel that 